Well, it's federal election time again, and like three years ago, Coast News is meeting with all the main candidates for the upcoming election uh, for the seat of Robertson. And we're very fortunate today to have the sitting member for Robinson, Lucy Wicks, with us. Lucy, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Lucy, you enjoyed a 3% swing in your favour at the last election to return you um, to the seat of Robinson. In that last term of office, what would you say were your two greatest achievements? The first is actually building better infrastructure here on the Central Coast, world-class infrastructure. I think about the Medical uh, University and the Medical Research Institute that uh, opened without great fanfare during the COVID-19 pandemic last year, but was formally opened earlier this year, a groundbreaking $85 million investment in world-class education and healthcare here in Gosford. That of course has been complemented by the announcement of the extension of the university campus with the federal government's $18 million commitment on the old MITRE 10 site. And that's going to deliver even more opportunities for our young people to be able to study where they live. And one of the most equally important was the groundbreaking funding of Health on the Streets, an initiative to take out healthcare to those who are sleeping rough and doing it really tough. And we didn't know when we funded that, when we worked together with the Central Coast uh, Primary Care um, uh, area at the time, we didn't know that we would need it for COVID-19. Uh, a number of our readers have called out a number of things you um, foreshadowed at the last election, things like the Woi Woi commuter car park, the Umina skate park, even going back further to the Performing Arts Centre here. We haven't seen those things ar arrive. Can you tell us uh, about that? Well, one of the things I know about when you deliver a commitment, you do need to see it through to the end. Uh, I'm still remaining committed to the Performing Arts Centre, but unfortunately, that is something that lies with Central Coast Council, and uh, you know, I'll continue to support and promote a Performing Arts Centre here on the Central Coast. Absolutely, 100% backing that uh, that important project for the Central Coast. In relation to car parking here. Uh, yes, there's been some frustrating delays, incredibly frustrating for commuters and for people here on the Central Coast, but uh, I have been working night and day to overturn every sim single obstacle that we've encountered. We now have the site for Woi Woi Car Park uh, announced. Construction is going to start by the end of the year. In relation to the Gosford Car Park, of course, we had the situation where Council went into administration and we had to find another partner to be able to deliver that. The New South Wales Government has agreed to do so and they're currently looking at different site options but again I'm committed to making sure that important car park is delivered. Uh, Lucy if we can turn our attention to the national landscape yep. for a moment and the coalition has presented itself as having stronger credentials in the area of economic management yet we've got record level of national debt, we've got a housing affordability crisis, an aged care crisis and we're now confronted with a very significant increase in inflation and prospectively interest rates. Is it really a good track record? Well, if I look at our track record, all I can say to you is exactly what it is. We balance the budget. And in balancing the budget, that enabled us to deal with one of the greatest challenges that we've certainly seen, certainly in my lifetime, with the COVID-19 pandemic and all of the challenges that came with that, including economically as well. We saw the ability for us to be able to help businesses remain con and employees remain connected to their businesses with JobKeeper. We saw the ability for us to be able to support people with JobSeeker and a number of other important initiatives to be able to make sure that we could do what we said we would do, which was to help businesses stand up and get to the other side of the pandemic. And now what we are looking at, as uh, you know, we go towards an election, we do look at our record. Our record is, in the recent budget, one of the greatest turnarounds, strongest turnarounds in the budget in 70 years, one of the highest vaccination rates in the world, one of the lowest mortality rates from COVID-19 in the world, and strong economic recovery with unemployment at 4%. We are, however, in a, in a time of war in Europe, and so a lot of the premise of strong economic growth being globalisation and free trade is now seems to be all up for question. How is the coalition thinking about its approach to trade and foreign policy in this context? Well, we certainly face some of the greatest challenges uh, that we've seen certainly um, in recent memory 
around the world and those challenges are ongoing and there's no doubt that Australia is well positioned, very well positioned to be able to deal with the challenging headwinds that may come our way. Our government has been investing in economic relationships, including I, I think recently about some of the announcements of um, you know, the, the stronger cooperation and investment with India, for example. We've got a groundbreaking uh, partnership in relation to the AUKUS commitments that the Prime Minister outlined. We have very strong commitments to our, our, our Pacific region. These are all things that, uh, that the Australian government has been doing in order to ensure our economic and our national security to ensure our sovereignty here as Australians and here as a nation. And certainly one of the things we're also doing is investing in modern manufacturing capabilities, including here on the Central Coast. Lucy, one of the things that happened this year was uh, what's been described as one of the most successful community-led environmental campaigns since the Franklin River Dam, uh, and that is the cancellation of the PEP 11 permit. You have taken some credit for that. Uh, however, you did stand up in Parliament and speak against uh, a bill uh, in relation to the cancellation of that permit. How is it that you claim credit for that? There was no uh, motion in Parliament in relation to debating for or against a bill. The motion was in relation to suspending standing orders and the business that was to be interrupted was actually really important reforms in relation to aged care, responses to the Royal Commission into aged care. But when I did speak in Parliament, what I spoke of was my support for the community's opposition to saying no to PEP 11. And in fact, I encouraged uh, people on all sides of the chamber to work together and not to politicise something that I didn't think was political at all. Since that time, we've been very careful to follow the appropriate process in relation to this matter. There is an established um, process that does need to be undergone in relation to consideration of these matters. And I will just say, the reason it is important to follow that process is because when you stop something like PEP 11, you don't want it to be unstopped. I'd like to ask you a question now with some trepidation on another issue, and it relates to events of a year or two ago and the alleged rape of a young female Liberal staffer, Brittany Higgins. Now, I'm, I appreciate that matters before the court and mm. you're a little constrained in how you can respond to it, but what I'd like to ask you is, how did those events impact you and as a woman and a senior member of the Liberal Party, how is the party responding to what appears to be a cultural issue and what role are you playing in that? Uh, thanks, Ross. Those weeks, those months have impacted me deeply. They've forced me to confront some of the very real lived challenges that I faced in my lifetime. Things I've deeply buried, things I would prefer not to have to remember. Things that, for instance, I've recently had to deal with and remember and lean into. I'm learning. I'm learning how to be able to deal with and tackle the long trail of trauma and how to heal from that. And I hope to be able to use that experience, as awful as it has been, but I do hope to be able to use that experience for good, to be able to be a voice for others in the parliament, in our community, in our nation, to make sure that we not only end the cycle of abuse and violence, but that we actually reverse it. It is not okay. Abuse in the workplace is not okay. Abuse in the home is not okay. Abuse in the street is not okay. Abuse online is absolutely not okay. There are four women's safety ministers that now serve under the Morrison government, a record eight, minister, eight cabinet ministers who are women. That's a record number for Australia. We are seeing a determination by this government to be able to tackle abuse in all of its forms. And certainly when those horrific events unfolded last year, the Prime Minister announced the groundbreaking, incredibly important Respect at Work review. But Ross, I come back to something. It's not enough. It's good. We need to end this cycle of violence and abuse. But we have to go further in my view and we have to be able to reverse it. Abusers not only need to stop abusing, we need to get to a point where they can become known 
as people who are kind, people who are respectful, people who are generous. Um, we've got a long way to go in this nation, but it started with a conversation, a really important conversation that was started by an incredibly brave young woman. That conversation needs to continue. If you are returned and the coalition is returned to government at this next election, what can the people on this, of Robertson and here on the Central Coast expect to see? I think you can expect to see that we will continue to build on those strong achievements we've already delivered to the people of the Central Coast. North Connects, a 50-year commitment that was not built until we actually said, let's get it done. We got it done. Saving hard-working commuters, 15 minutes travel time each way. The Medical University and Medical University Research Institute, something that was a dream of people here on the Central Coast for decades. Now not only a reality, but we're expanding that with even more offerings. They'll be ready, that, will be, that expanded university campus will be up and running within the next three years. The sporting infrastructure um, upgrades around our community, better mobile coverage and also faster uh, NBN, including with the gigabyte update that uh, we've announced recently to Erina and Kingcumber, and that will be rolled out progressively by the end of next year to 75% of households around Australia. We've been tackling the, the challenge of youth unemployment with record number of apprentices here in Robertson, 2,800 apprentices, a record number, and we're investing even more into skills and training and apprenticeship opportunities to give our young people the very best opportunities that they may want to be able to set them up to equip them to be able to get into the career that they want to, to have and to have all of the ability to follow that pathway through to success. We are tackling um, some of the challenges for young people with our Musicians Making a Difference initiative, um, investing in, in young people in the Gosford Youth Hub as well, making sure that our young people have got important wraparound services. But most importantly, I could talk forever about our local commitments, but the most important thing, Ross, is that the reason we can do that is because of our record and our determination to ensure a strong economy because it's only with a strong economy that you can actually afford to pay for the essential services that Australians have come to rely on. I look at some of the investments that we've made in tackling the GP crisis that we've had here on the Central Coast. 13 GPs with eight underway by the end of June, thanks to our $2 million GP incentive fund. We're not going to stop there, but we are determined to be able to uh, deliver bespoke solutions that deliver the right outcomes for the people here on the Central Coast without shying away from any of the problems or challenges that we may face in order to deliver a stronger future for people here on the Central Coast. Lucy Wicks, thank you very much for talking with us today. Thank you.